All right, babies. It's that time again. And it's earlier than normal because I got to get to work a half hour early to do some last minute work that got thrown on me yesterday. Uh, yeah, can you tell the excitement in my voice? Um, so God is still good, of course. And God is helping me deal with the nonsense. Didn't really... <laughs> I didn't really do a good job representing him when I got the news yesterday. Oh my God. <laughs> it was an unpleasant reception. Let's put it that way. It wasn't terrible, but it certainly was clear that I was not happy. Um, so we are in Job 6, baby. Oh, and I don't really have anything to say again. <clears throat> about it, except that I'm really, um, I'm really impressed with the literary sophistication of its syntax. Yeah, baby. Check it out. I mean, I, I'm thinking, I'm going to do some research on this, but I know Job is considered to be one of the older books written. So if that's the case, it's, it's got to proceed. It's got to be before 500 BC. But I'm thinking uh, there must have been some kind of Greek influence on the community that produced this work. I don't know of any other civilization at the time that would be responsible for it. Um, you know, I don't, I know the Egyptians were a advanced civilization, but I don't know. You'll have to read it to, to see what I'm saying. It's, it's hard to understand. It's very dense in its poetic, um, symbolism and word choice um that's why i'm thinking it's it, it, it's uh my thought is first thought was a, a, a greek influence but anyhow um really hard to understand so that's why i, you know, I really don't have a lot to say about it but it's really kind of just job uh replying to his friend uh and just saying, you know, you know, say what you want, but I am still being a righteous person before God, in spite of all my physical calamities and livelihood and everything being taken away. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, I think it's a useful uh, book in that regard because it helps us to focus on what really matters in the world and that, me, and that is uh, focusing on things that are eternal eternal being those things that will never end like love, joy, peace uh, wisdom, the attributes we usually consider to be the best expressions of who and what God is, and that being our heart's desire is to reflect that in the world. Yeah, so much so that when everything else is taken away, we still have our joy and we still have our meaning and we still have our purpose. And <clears throat> all the more remarkable, you know, 
in my opinion, uh, you know, prior to the uh, the advent of God's Spirit being available to us, following Jesus' death and ascension into the heavenlies. And the reason I uh, hesitate on the word resurrection is because I don't really care if his body was resurrected. I don't care. He went... He was the f first fruits. He was the first one to pass into the afterlife and to grant us full access to God and the ability to be transformed. Um, why do I say that? Because we have writings of the disciples who had extraordinary conversions and in my own life I'm an example of an extraordinary conversion and millions of people after that so that's why to me there's evidence of the afterlife there's evidence of power and anointing in the name of Jesus so there's so much evidence that you know it's almost like you have to have more faith as an atheist to not believe than to believe and that's my position there so to me it doesn't matter if his body was raised or not he died and he became available to us just like we're going to I mean, uh, how many of us think we're going to be our bodies are going to be raised hopefully not too many seeing as we're cre cremating now more than being interred so uh, yeah baby so what so what else happened yesterday uh, uh, that's pretty much it um, as far as my prayer time now when I say prayer time I'm referring to setting aside time where I'm on my face, so to speak, before God and looking for a word or something that he might want to say to me directly as I put everything else aside, as opposed to praying all day long. I, I mean, uh, like I've said before to you, if you put yourself in the posture of being continually in communion with God because he is alive and living in you it's really not that hard you just have to set your mind to do it uh, it's, it's sort of like uh, you know inviting Jesus over uh, to watch a movie and you look over next to you on the couch and oh yeah there he is uh, it's kind of like that. It's just like you just have to open up your eyes and see who's who's around. <laughs> Jesus is around. Um, so the prayer in, in the in this prayer moment, uh, I had a little thought of like stepping out in church and like delivering kind of a uh, prophetic vocal singing utterance <laughs> which would be quite striking um, which I could do at a moment's notice um, the, the prophetic part is really up to the spirit I can't just turn that on but you know if I put my attention towards God and, you know, praise Him in a sort of a uh, spontaneous song of praise, He quite often will give me words uh, that, to me, suggest a prophetic quality to them. So I'm thinking at some point I'll be doing that in church and uh, people will be like, oh, um, 
So God can bless the gay guy. <laughs> All right, have a good one.